ServiceNow Orchestrated Workflow Automation is a separate license used to expand the functionality of the ServiceNow platform, and its usage is defined by any external communication from ServiceNow Workflow to a third-party interface. I'm going to point out how orchestration plays a role in our operations management story and how you can extend what is offered as out-of-box to automate your business processes. When using our ITOM suite and capabilities like cloud provisioning, configuration automation, and oftentimes many steps used in auto remediation of events and other enterprise level tasks, the underlying workhorse is the ServiceNow orchestration workflow engine. All orchestration is run and managed and easily visible from our workflow operations dashboard. When a workflow runs, you'll be able to visualize the path it took to fulfill its request, even when multiple workflows are being used to do the fulfillment of that particular request. You can also see a timeline of how long the activities within a given workflow take to do the fulfillment of a request. Now ServiceNow offers many of these workflows out of box, but nothing's hidden from the user. If you wanted to see how we actually do that cloud provisioning request. The workflow is there for the, for the user to see. You can check it out and change it even though that's not recommended, but you can make copies and extend this workflow to include new steps that you may want to, uh, that you may so desire. Now for orchestration, many activities come as out of the box, drag and drop activities that you can place on the canvas in the workflow. Functionality that is not included can be created through our custom activity designer. <clears throat> Once your subject matter experts create these activities, those that understand and know the process can use these activities by dragging and drop them into a workflow, into the workflow canvas. In this case, I've created an incident auto triage so when an incident of a particular type is opened, several steps happen and update the incident record before any of my support engineers start to work the incident. You'll see that I have a sub workflow running within this auto triage. Within that sub workflow, I do many things like ping the IP address of the CI affected, get the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, and the disk information, as well as any services that may or may not be running or have failed to start. That way, <clears throat> when an event is created in a particular CI, an alert will be created. And that alert will in turn generate an incident that needs to be worked. And that incident will have workflow tied to it. So it will kick off and begin its auto remediation process before anybody even begins to work that incident. So hopefully these few things help you understand the role that orchestration plays in our overall ITOM offering. Thanks very much.